Supermodels might as well be another species, right? Blessed with killer looks and amazing poise, it's their world and we're just living in it. But did you know some former runway goddesses now sell Avon and teach yoga? There's nothing wrong with that, of course, but let's take a look. Helena Christensen was named one of the Magnificent Seven Supermodels by The New York Times in 1996. In her 50s, Christensen is still modeling, and in 2018, she appeared alongside Carla Bruni, Claudia Schiffer, Naomi Campbell, and Cindy Crawford to close out the Versace runway at the Milan Fashion Week, according to Vogue Paris. While Christensen continues to grace fashion magazine covers, she has also taken a role in the fashion industry as a photographer. In 2019, Helena Christensen told Whitewall, I decided to give modeling a go so I could pursue a photography career. Traveling was a major part of Christensen's passion for the fashion industry, as she told this Sydney Morning Herald. Wanting to explore the world was one of the main reasons I even found modeling interesting at all from the beginning. In her travels, Christensen has been able to pursue photography in tandem with her modeling career. In 2015, Christensen began working with the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, using her photography skills to advocate for the rights of refugees, and she was later appointed as a goodwill ambassador for the UNHCR in 2019. Since taking more time to focus on her photography career, Christensen has used her talents and fame to raise awareness for sustainability, AIDS, and breast cancer. She told Harper's Bazaar Arabia, I love the way the fashion business is active and raising awareness about all kinds of issues. Anytime I can be a part of that, I am. Supermodel Christy Turlington was also one of the Magnificent Seven from the 90s, best known for her consistent work with Calvin Klein. Turlington began working with Calvin Klein as the face of their Eternity campaign in the late 80s, and she continues to front the campaign today, nearly four decades later. Despite her continued work in the modeling industry, Turlington founded Every Mother Counts in 2010 after the release of her documentary No Woman, No Cry. It's a charity designed to ensure quality, respectful, and equitable maternity care for all. In an interview with Marie Claire, Turlington explained that she began her work to establish the charity after experiencing postpartum complications following the birth of her daughter. Turlington earned her master's degree in public health from Columbia University before launching her nonprofit. In 2020, Turlington was asked to join a COVID-19 maternity task force for the state of New York to address the complications involved for mothers during lockdown, noted Vogue. Founding and running a nonprofit organization is a full-time job, Turlington told Marie Claire. There's a lot of advocacy work that's involved. We try to work with legislators and policymakers here in the United States to improve policies, improve coverage, and lengthen the period of time where women are insured postpartum. The New Zealand supermodel began her career at 17. When Rachel Hunter moved to New York to begin modeling, she quickly booked shoots with Vogue, Elle, Harper's Bazaar, and Sports Illustrated. In an interview with Beautiful Humans, Hunter explained, My true love is for animals and the earth. I never wanted to be a model. I did not think highly of it. While filming in New Zealand, Hunter met with a producer to discuss working on a show with spirituality as a major focus. Hunter explained, we got together, and she said, oh, you will get back on TV. Spirituality is all very well, but you are in the world of beauty and modeling, so let's merge the two. From this meeting, Rachel Hunter's tour of beauty was born. The travel show explored beauty practices and spirituality throughout the world by focusing on food, medicine, and lifestyles. After her mother passed in 2017, Hunter went to India to study yoga. There, she surpassed over 500 hours of yoga teaching experience earning her master training certification. I said to my mum in her last stages when I was lying in bed with her, I said, what do you regret? And she goes, not fully stepping into who I am. As a yoga teacher, Hunter told Beautiful Humans, I don't teach anything unless I spend a lot of time with different prayers or different breath work so I can really express what I went through. Kathy Ireland gained her supermodel status by getting featured in the Sports Illustrated annual swimsuit issue for 13 consecutive years. In 1989, she landed the cover, which ended up being the best-selling issue for the magazine of all time, according to Success. In an interview with Fox News, Ireland said, "...modeling was not part of my plan. It was offered to me, and I thought it would be an opportunity to save money to either go to college or start a business." Ireland founded her business, Kathy Ireland Worldwide, in 1993 after a sock company reached out to her for a modeling job. From the beginning when we started with socks, uh, diversity was part of our strategy and it continues to be. She took the opportunity to offer the business a partnership with her brand, thereby launching her career as an entrepreneur. 
Ireland's brand began by focusing on women's clothing. Her brand sold exclusively through Kmart, and when Kmart filed for bankruptcy in 2002, Kathy Ireland Worldwide began selling home furnishings and pulled through the setback. Today, the company sells over 17,000 products, according to Forbes. The company also runs luxury resorts, a talent agency, and licensing, among other services. In 2015, the entrepreneur joined Forbes' list of America's top 50 most successful women. Brazilian supermodel Giselle Bündchen began her career with the 1998 Alexander McQueen runway, according to Elle. In her memoir, Lessons, My Path to a Meaningful Life, Bündchen wrote that she almost ended her career then, when she realized that she was being asked to walk completely topless. But of course, we know Bündchen would go on to have a super successful modeling career. In 2020, she officially retired from the runway. She told reporters for a Brazilian newspaper, "...automatically my body tells me if what I do is worth it, and it asked to stop." While the supermodel continues to model for editorials and ad campaigns, she is also pursuing a new line of work, fantasy sports. Following her retirement from runway walking, Bunchen, who married football star Tom Brady in 2009, became a special advisor to the board of directors for environmental, social, and governance initiatives for the fantasy sports platform DraftKings in 2021. Jason Robbins, the co-founder and CEO of DraftKings, sought Bunchen for her expertise in environmental advocacy. Bunchen said on the DraftKings website, "...I look forward to working with the DraftKings board of directors and continuing to find ways to make the most positive impacts through meaningful social and environmental initiatives." Adrian Curry was the first winner of America's Next Top Model, taking home the crown in cycle one of the show. Curry discussed the lackluster opportunities offered to her after her win in a now-deleted Instagram post, in which she said, "...we were led to believe daily the winner would be instantly rich and a huge Revlon cover girl. This was a lie." After winning the first season, however, Curry did go on to model for two covers of Playboy magazine, and snagged some other modeling gigs, including runway shows for Ed Hardy and Von Dutch. Curry went on to work in reality TV, starring in The Surreal Life and My Fair Brady. In her blog, Curry describes how she left the Hollywood lifestyle to move to Montana with her husband, Matthew Rode, where the supermodel now works a normal job and sells Avon makeup products. She wrote on Instagram in 2020, "...I've been happily living a pretty low-profile life outside of being an online Avon lady, and I quite enjoy it." Stephanie Seymour, another iconic supermodel from the 80s and 90s, was one of five original Victoria's Secret Angels. In 1995, Seymour married billionaire Peter Brandt, which undoubtedly secured a financially sound lifestyle for the supermodel. Despite this, Seymour has continued working into her 50s, and came out of her retirement in modeling in 2019 to walk the fall Versace show in Milan, noted Vogue. Hey, I got a wacky idea. What say we settle this on the runway? In 2017, Seymour launched the lingerie line Raven and Sparrow, which he co-founded with designer Casey Paul. In an interview with Business of Fashion, Seymour explained why she decided to launch the company, saying, "...I love the fashion industry, and it's a business I wanted to stay in, and as you get older, you don't work as much." Seymour's line was born from a need for more inclusivity in lingerie. She told The Telegraph, "...I think so much of today's lingerie is made for men." So her collection is designed with women's comfort in mind. And as a mother, Seymour wanted her line to make all women feel beautiful. Seymour chose the name for the brand very specifically. She told Business of Fashion that she didn't want the brand to be named after her. It's not about me trying to use my name or take all the credit. I feel like the product will speak for itself. Claudia Schiffer was another member of the Magnificent Seven during her reign in the 90s. Her career bloomed when she became the face for Guess Jeans and then Chanel, and she continued to dominate magazine covers and runways for decades. While Schiffer hasn't retired from modeling, she has pursued other interests in recent years. One such endeavor is glassware and ceramics design. Schiffer created a whimsical line of ceramics with a popular Brazilian glassware company. She's also collaborated with clothing designers to create a fashion line with European brand Realization Par, as noted by Vogue. In 2021, Schiffer is curating an exhibition on 1990s fashion photography in Dusseldorf. This exhibit is something that Schiffer is especially passionate about. It is largely based off of the book Captivate that Schiffer put together, which is set to be published in November 2021. Claudia told Vogue in an interview that the exhibit has been curated from her personal photographs that she has been collecting since the beginning of her career. Schiffer told W Magazine, "...the 1990s was a watershed moment that upturned ideals of beauty and fashion. 
Above all, there was innovation and experimentation. During the turbulent days of lockdown, I was so grateful to have this project to immerse myself in. Supermodel Rosie Huntington-Whiteley is best known for her work with Victoria's Secret, Burberry, and Levi's, noted Us Weekly, but she left Victoria's Secret in 2010 to focus on building a more stable financial future for herself. She told Girl Boss Radio, I've always been so aware that modeling is perhaps going to have a very short shelf life. Whiteley launched her beauty line, Rose Inc., in 2018, according to The Hollywood Reporter. In an interview with E! News, Whiteley explained, "...after being in the makeup chair for over 20 years, I have definitely seen and experienced the best, and sometimes the not-so-great, when it comes to beauty products." Whiteley used her experience in the modeling industry to develop, quote, "...100% non-comedogenic formulas." In her interview, she described her brand as "...transparent, effective, sustainable." Whiteley also explained that she had partnered with Amaris, a company that specializes in sustainable and clean beauty products, to ensure that Rose Inc. products would match her sustainability and ethical goals. Kim Stoles entered the modeling industry after she was, quote, "...dared by a friend to audition for Cycle 5 of America's Next Top Model." Stoles, who was a government and international politics student at the time of the audition, is the daughter of model Carol Brandt, who had modeled for Ralph Lauren in the 70s, according to The New York Times. Stoles made it to the top five before being eliminated. Stoles is remembered for being the first contestant to openly identify as a lesbian while on America's Next Top Model, as noted by Insider. When she spoke to a reporter from The Advocate, Stoles said that she hoped that she "...made the queer community proud." Since her time on the show, Stoles was a host for MTV and opened and closed a lesbian bar, among other endeavors. In 2014, she began working for Bank of America as the director for Equity Derivative Sales. By 2018, Stoles was made the head of Bank of America's U.S. Prime Brokerage sales team. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more list videos about your favorite stars are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.